Uh, we are going to go ahead and get started with Tofik Shah. He is the founder and owner of Lola's Fine Hot Sauce and the managing partner of Lola's Fine Kitchen. Delicious food if you've never been up there in Ankeny. Tofik brings six worth six years worth of retail industry experience working with big box retailers such as Lowe's, Target, Walmart, Hy-Vee, and many other retailers. I The list is phenomenal. If you go to their website and you specifically think you want to work with somebody, go look at their website and Tofik has probably worked with them. Uh, Tofik is actually a native Iowa. He was born in uh, Iowa. He is the Lola's hot sauce brand, but he is bringing his family recipe so his story, I don't want to give it away, Tofi, because you'll say how you'll tell the story of how this came. But they are actually in fifteen thousand retailers across North America. So he has been down this road for the last six years. It is a wealth of knowledge um, on the food piece. If there's specific audience members wanting to know that, but Tofi, I'm going to hand it over to you. I will let the audience know that if you would like to switch your camera to speaker view. Um, it's a little bit better view during the presentation. It is up at the top in your settings. Feel free to do that. But Tofik, the floor is yours and the rest of us will stay on mute. Awesome. Thank you so much, Christina. And, and thank you everybody for this wonderful opportunity to come speak to everybody and uh, educate a little people about how we do um, our business here. It's, uh, you know, uh, so just to give you a little background, what Christina said, Tofik Shaw, founder and CEO of Lola's Fine Hot Sauce. So I was born in Waterloo, Iowa, um, Iowa native. So growing up, um, you know, I had always been eating this generational family recipe hot sauce. So my mom, she's an immigrant from the Philippines. She's a doctor that came to Iowa of all places to take care of farmers during a time where they're just wasn't any good health care. <clears throat> so growing up, my mom ran her own medical practice in a small town called Winthrop, Iowa, where she took care of all the local farmers. And she always made sure I had a warm, hot meal for lunch, you know, for dinner or whatever, whatever it was. And uh, we would always have this delicious bottle of hot sauce, which is the same hot sauce that we're serving today and selling in these retailers um, across the United States and as well as in Canada. Um, growing up also, you know, my dad, he was in the U.S. Army for over 30 years and served and was mostly actively deployed. So being able to have my mom run her own business while uh, making sure we had a warm, hot meal was always the inspiration behind the brand and behind Lola's. So uh, just to give you a little background of how Lola started. So that's that. Um, where we truly did start, though, for our retail presence and online as well as food service presence started in 2015. I was working downtown um, at a corporate job and I had brought in this hot sauce for a food day at work. And people said it was the best hot sauce they had ever had um, and said, you ought to be selling this. So from then on, <clears throat> I took Lola's Lola's Fine Hot Sauce, took it to farmer's markets everywhere with my mom and I making it in a commercial kitchen in Valley Junction over here in West Des Moines. Um, we would make it overnight and then I'd go do every farmer's markets I could. I would basically load my car up and try to sell it wherever we could, uh, whoever would purchase it. So that's kind of the story where Lola started. And, and not soon after, you know, Hy-Vee picked up our products and then moving forward after that, Kroger and then Whole Foods and the natural grocers. And it's just been kind of a snowball um, effect with our brand, which has been awesome. And we've launched some new products as well. So we are 100% local here in Iowa. And I'm here to give you the nitty gritty and get down into the good, the bad and the ugly about running a retail food business, especially with the manufacturing and everything that's involved. <clears throat> so a couple of things I want to go across the list of kind of the retailers that we work with. So we work with a vast array of retailers and third-party distributors. You know, we work with Hy-Vee, Lowe's, Whole Foods. I'm trying to think of some major ones, Target, Costco, BJ's Wholesale Club. We work with a lot of big names across the country, um, as well as Canada and these large third-party distributors. We don't do a lot of direct store distribution. A lot of it is B2B where we sell big bulk quantities to a lot of these third parties. They will then in turn take the product and sell it or uh, be a point of delivery for these large retailers like Meyer as well as Hy-Vee as well. We work with Lomar. So just wanted to get into that. So, I mean, the business started slowly with me loading up the car, going into these stores, selling the product onto their store shelves. And then, you know, one of the key components in, in really growing your business is making sure trials happen, right? We want to make sure that your business method and your product is validated. And we had that validation when we sold into Hy-Vee's and I would spend my entire day just sitting there, hey, do you want to try some hot sauce? You know, everything from demos to marketing promotions, 
to getting things out there. So, um, you know, started the business by doing as many demos and partnering with as many local companies as possible. Um, eventually as we became more on a national basis, we started working with bigger PR firms to help us scale the business, but it shouldn't deter anybody from diving into this business because it's fun. It's rewarding. A couple of things that need to be done when you are starting a manufacturing company and working with a lot of these big retailers is, you know, the, the leap of faith to move forward. You know, you have to make the product first and make the investment into manufacturing, make the investment into um, selling and marketing the product, then getting the product out there. And then you have to wait, depending on your terms with some of these places, you know, whether it's a, a big, big box retailer, which, you know, sometimes can pay you in 90 days, you know, some of these, some of these big box retailers, they, they won't pay you for that long, but you can negotiate terms where you can give a certain percentage away of what your total gross sale is to them so that they'll pay you sooner. For example, you could give them 2% of your total sale um, to get paid in 10 days. That way you can cash flow your business and make sure that you're always floating onto the next thing. And so that's kind of how we grew our business. So we grew our business with a model of in mind of growth at all costs for the first few years <clears throat> where we would do the two percent net 10. That way we can cash flow our business, work with local as well as regional manufacturing facilities, implement contracts in place with them so that they can make the product to our standard, make sure our quality control check is good. So every batch of Lola's that's made, uh, my mom is our QC analyst and rightfully so it's her recipe. So she tries every single batch before it's released to the market. So we have, um, that's the scalability and then the quality control check, which then in turn, we take that inventory <clears throat> we use a local warehouse here in Des Moines to store our products as well as our own office. Um, and we own that inventory. And then we work on paying our manufacturers with terms too. So some of our manufacturers, we pay them in, well, most of them are 30 days. And some of them actually give us discounts if we pay them earlier. So some may give us, you know, one or 2% discount if we pay them within 10 days. So it's kind of the cycle of getting the inventory, getting it in, selling it as fast as possible and moving it. That way you can cash flow the business and keep growing. So that's the good part <clears throat> and something that you want to hone in on and have a good accounting for because as your business scales and you dive into this, you know, you may want to, you know, grow it into other regions. Like we just launched in Meyer, which is throughout the entire state of Michigan, Illinois, and Woodman's, um, as well as we launched in BJ's Wholesale Club, which is at the Northeast. Um, a lot of these big accounts, you want to make sure that when you're, you, you have a good accounting team, because number one, when you do a promotion, if your product is not moving as fast as it necessarily should, because, you know, for example, our product in, uh, in Iowa, it's amazing. It's everybody knows us. It's good. But when you start to get out of Iowa, there are challenges that you face with each geography and demographic that you go into. And so what we like to do is we like to do four quarterly promotions with our brand. So a lot of things that a lot of businesses, and you may not know is when you see Lola's on sale, when it's like 50 cents off or a dollar off, we're actually paying for that. We're funding that deal. Number one, number two, some of these retailers, we are paying to run that deal because of the amount of labor that goes for the shelf talkers for um, their staff at whatever retailer it is to basically take a, a tag that highlights that your product's on sale. So we have to admit, pay for that. So um, we always want to make sure that our margins are good when we do something like that. You don't want to give away the whole hen house, so to speak. Um, but having a good accounting team are, is definitely a key component to helping make sure that when you're running these promotions and you're entering new markets, that you're staying on top of your deductions or billbacks, because sometimes they can get pretty heavy, especially if you're moving big volume. So some of the good things too, and, and, you know, uh, some of the other accounts that we work with, you know, that, um, some good insight into is, is we do sell to the defense commissaries. So all of the military bases across the country, you can find Lola's in every single one. Um, so what we do for that is it, it's great how the government works because they don't take a margin. They take a 1% margin, whereas you're totally used to when, when I sell a product to Hy-Vee or Fairway, let's say it sells for $5. I'm actually selling it into them less than that. You know what I mean? So that they can make a certain margin. And certain margins, what we've seen in the grocery industry are anywhere from 30 to 40%. It depends on which retailer that you're working with and um, what region. But with the uh, military, uh, they don't take any margin, which is great because in turn, it, it helps support our troops and we're able to get a lower price in to help the people that are protecting America. So a lot of good things there. So if you can do business with the government, that's a great thing to do. Um, and I know somebody else is going to touch on that, but push, push that as much as possible because it's great. 
<clears throat> you know, some of the um, bad things about the business, you know, I mean, it's manufacturing headaches. And right now, you know, after, after COVID and everything has happened, you know, thankfully, and I'm knocking on wood here, supply chains right now have been just a disaster through the roof. You know, freight has gone up, um, wood for pallets has gone up, cost to manufacturing, getting labor has gone up. So dealing with different challenges, such as now, you know, getting glass, getting certain ingredients, especially if they're new, rare, or, or unique, it's been a challenge or it's been a waiting game. So there's a lot of that going on right now. So that's, that's some of the bad stuff that we're, we're doing with overall, but a, as a company, we have not experienced the full extent of that luckily because we have, <clears throat> and this is a, a good tip is to always have, if you're not manufacturing your own is to have multiple manufacturing facilities. And right now at Lola's, we're working with five to seven different manufacturing facilities. So for example, if one goes down here, we can move production to another facility to keep things going. So being diversified in your manufacturing, as well as having a, a great quality control team is good. Um, deductions can be a pain. Um, you know, you might, for example, we work with the third party distributors such as Cisco, you know, KHE, UNFI, US Foods, Dot Foods, these big companies that just buy a ton of product from you. And, you know, they're trying to move the product within their schematic and time frame that they've set for that, that particular category, which our category would be hot sauce or salsa. So in these, uh, when they buy those, sometimes there are deductions, you know, whether the product arrived late, you know, for example, one of our distributors, if our product arrives late, they charge us a $300 fee. It's ridiculous. So you have to deal with this. And these fees are very common among the industries, especially as supply chains have been disrupted. So you want to make sure that everything from your 3PL, which is, you know, getting your freight, your trucking, having a freight broker is good, accurate on time. You have those routing guides, which tell you which distributor, which company prefers which trucking carrier. Um, that way you're not stuck behind or have any delays. <clears throat> Also, you know, when you run things on promotion, you know, for example, we work with um, Kihi, which is a very large third party distributor. They do almost every major retailer in the country. We're heavy on the West Coast with Kihi as well as here in uh, Chicago, Illinois. And these the third party distributors, they average everything together. So I may have sold, you know, let's just say $10,000 to California, but $20,000 to Illinois. But in Illinois, we ran a big promotion. It's going to sum all those numbers up and you're going to see deductions come back to you. So you may send them $30,000 worth of gross invoices, but you may get paid only 20. So you really want to make sure that when you get into this business and as you scale and get to this level that you have a good, uh, good accounting team um, and then good people to manage your bill back. So having a great team is essential. Um, the rewards of it though, I mean, once you get things going and you get the motion of building your brand and getting out there and it's just, it's humbling to see your story, your, your product out there and, and changing lives. You know, when you launch a product, you're adding value and you're trying to add as much value to that particular category where you're launching your product. And it's good to see that. And it's, it's worth the grind. It's worth, worth the fight to get things going and a lot of good things, um, some other good things, you know, about, you know, running your own business, obviously is the freedom to do so and getting into this. I mean, a lot of people are scared of the fact that, you know, you have to all these upfront costs to get in there, but when you do it and you make that leap and you have a very good product and it starts moving and selling, it becomes, um, part of people's lives. It becomes a good product. And also, uh, it just feels good to have that, that recognition out there. Um, and Christina, I apologize. Is there anything else that you want me to touch touch on? I'm I'm trying to just go through the good and bad yeah. of what I'm experiencing, so I'm, I apologize. Yeah, no. Will you touch on? I know that you're a TSB. I know how you've used that because our next session is all on becoming a TSB. Absolutely. So that's a huge thing. And I was actually going to dive into that. So being a TSB, so the way we got our business started, if you're a minority, um, you know, Iowa is a wonderful place to start your business. In fact, the best place to start your business because, you know, they're, they offer anywhere up to $50,000 in loans, which you can get, which is a very good note. I mean, very low interest and you can span that out over five years. So we actually took one of those out in the beginning of our business to get started. And it tremendously changed our, our business structure because when I started Lola's, I started with without 
without any debt, without anything. It was just all my own money from what I had saved. Um, and I took everything I had and a leap of faith and risked it to get the products out there. Um, and then that note with the Iowa TSB changed our lives. Um, not only that, but they've got a great 72 hour bid. Or I think it's a 48 hour or 72 hour bid system, which is incredible. Um, you can log on there and see what um, our government's looking for, what uh, what the state's looking for to help with procurement. And if you're registered as a TSB, you get first, uh, first bids to and then you, those RFPs, which, you know, to touch on, you know, our, our request for proposals, we just use PowerPoint, we put something together, show the product, show how we can add value, and then put in our best price to see what we can do to make this accessible for everyone. So a um, lot of great stuff at the TSB. Um, another thing is too, we work with Food Export Midwest. We do a lot of business in Canada. We work with about 300 retailers up there, as well as five new distributors that we just onboarded in the past 60 days, including UNFI Canada, which is Canada's largest natural special foods distributor, um, being part of food export Midwest, um, which they work together with a little bit with the Iowa TSB, but they supplement and subsidize some of your costs to get your product internationally. So we really use them to um, help grow our Iowa business and get our products out there. So a lot of great resources here in Iowa that you won't find anywhere else. So one of the best things in, in way we started our business, plus, you know, being born and raised in Iowa, there's no better place. <laughs> Um, anything else specifically that you want me to cover, Christina, besides the TSB and stuff? Is there anything else? I think, Tofik, that you are good. If the audience has questions for Tofik, if you could drop them in the chat so we don't lose them um, as we transition to the next speaker. But Tofik, as you can see, is a wealth of knowledge. Again, if you check out his website and you can see, I mean, they list everywhere they sell. So, And I know that he has been an awesome mentor to a lot of people that are wanting to get going and has kind of a consulting business on that as well. So if you need help, I will pitch that out for him because I know he will not say that, but he is available for that as well. So if you have questions, so we don't forget them again, just drop them in the chat. But Tofik, thank you so much.